Hi, so here we have an uh, Aces Transformer Flipbook model TP 300L. It doesn't charge. Uh, originally, it didn't turn on from the AC adapter either. Maybe the AC adapter is bad. So, just as a quick check, it doesn't tell you exactly if everything is right, but uh, still good to see, is to use a multimeter in voltage mode and measure the voltage from the AC adapter. So you can see that we have 19.4 volts, which is perfect. Okay, it could still be bad and uh, drop when under load. But I already tried a different power supply and it's doing the same thing. So we are gonna try to open this machine. It's already been unscrewed. Okay. So we here we are inside the machine, and the first thing is to unplug the battery. So be careful because this connector can rip off from the motherboard pretty easily. So lift the clips carefully on both sides, and now you can take the connector out. Okay. So just uh, right now we are gonna try to it on from AC adapter only. So when you plug in the AC adapter and try to turn it on with the power button, there is nothing happening at all. So it's not powering from the AC adapter. Okay, so uh, what we are gonna try to see is if we are getting some voltage on the AC adapter input circuit which is over here. So we have our DC jack, DC power jack right there. And this pin right here is a positive pin where we should get 19 volts. So we are gonna measure this. So let's plug it in. Take our multimeter. We have one plane over here. And if we measure right there, we indeed get 19 volts. Perfect. Okay, so then the power goes through the DC MOSFETs. So DC MOSFETs are generally placed just after the DC inject. With a little bit more. But not always. Here as I are, so we have a first DC MOSFET here and second DC MOSFET here. Right after them, we have the current sensing resistor for the system. And at the output of the current sensing resistor is the main power rail for the machine. So this power rail will power all the other DC to DC converters to power the CPU, the GPU, and so on. <coughs> so what we want to see is if we have some voltage on this power rail. So if we measure voltage, we have only 0.8 volts. So 0.8 volts isn't good. Of course, with only this voltage the machine will not turn on and it won't charge the battery properly. So, we know that we have an issue over here. Just as a precaution to make sure there is nothing else interfering with the board, you can try to disconnect everything from it. So here we are gonna remove the console battery. Okay, you can remove the screen connector. Make sure to remove it only after having disconnected the battery. We have a touchpad over here. Okay. Under there, we have the front panel LEDs. Here is the left IO board that also contains the power button, but this machine turns on automatically when you plug in AC adapter, the battery is disconnected, so that's not a problem. And we also have the hard drive. You can remove it from here. Okay, so just to make sure nothing is interfering, uh, we can disconnect speakers as well, it doesn't matter, but uh, why not? Okay, let's try again. So we plug the AC adapter in, and we still get nothing. So let's check voltage. 
we have 19 volt on the input, but 1 volt on the main power wire. So that's still not good. Okay, so since we have uh, no voltage on our main power rail, we probably have an issue with the charging circuit. So the charging circuit manages the switching between the AC adapter and the battery power, as well as manages and creates the battery charging rail to charge the battery. So this charging circuit has a lot of uh, built-in protections, uh, especially overcurrent protection, uh, which makes it turn off the DC MOSFET if something is going wrong. So uh, I made a guide on troubleshooting, troubleshooting uh, charging circuits on laptops. So it's available on Batcaps forum. So we are going to get on the Batcaps forum troubleshooting laptop portable and mobile mobile devices. Okay. We have a thread called laptop battery charging circuit. And here we have a first post on some theory. Uh, we are going to go over it very quickly. And then the troubleshooting steps. Okay, so about the theory. Uh, as I said, uh, laptop charging circuit manages the switching between AC adapter and battery power. And it also manages the battery charging and generates the power rail to charge the battery. There are two main different designs to handle this. So the hybrid power boost uh, and also 12 instrument circuits without power boost. So power boost is a feature to combine battery power and AC adapter power when there is a large load spike on the system. And there is narrow VDC. So first for the hybrid power boost design, the thing is that the main power rail, so here on system load, is taken from the AC adapter input and then when you have a battery, the battery discharges to the system through a MOSFET. The difference with the narrow VDC design, the narrow VDC design, in this case, takes the uh, main power rail from the battery charging rail, so the battery discharges here, and the AC adapter is converted to the battery charging rail through a uh, bug converter. Okay. Uh, in this case, we are in the first design. So the first design is used on most laptops that are not MacBooks and don't have USB-C. MacBooks always use these narrow VDC designs and uh, most laptops with USB-C use also the narrow VDC design. There are also uh, three different designs to create the main power rail. So you have the bug converter and the bug boost converter. Bug boost converter is almost exclusively used on USB-C laptops and the bug converter is used elsewhere. So here we don't have a USB-C laptop, so we are gonna have a simple bug converter. Okay, so bug converter is just the usual high side MOSFET, low side MOSFET, in the plot, filter capacitors, and then the output to the power rail, everything managed by a bug controller. The bug controller is integrated into the charging IC, which controls battery charging and, as I said, also switching between AC and battery power. Bug boost is a little bit different because the bug boost has four MOSFETs and can generate a lower voltage or a higher voltage. The bug converter can only generate a lower voltage. Okay, so let's go to the troubleshooting part. So we are in a no power situation when you are on AC power. So we have a charging circuit that will look like this because it's a hybrid power boost uh, configuration with bug converter only. So this is not the schematic for the laptop we have here because most of these laptops don't have schematics available. They only have board views if you are lucky. But it works the same way. So we have a uh, DC power jack here, so we get 19 volts over here. Then it goes through the first DC MOSFET, the second DC MOSFET, the current sensor transistor, and here plus V in is the system power rail on this board. Okay, uh, we are not gonna pay attention too much for on the battery charging rail, but the battery charging rail right over here. So that's the battery power goes through a current sensing resistor. 
and then this charges through the battery to system MOSFET over here and it gets charged through the bug converter with high side and low side MOSFET over here ok so let's skip this so you have also a schematic for NVDC so another VDC bug converter and another VDC bug box converter we are not interesting, interested in this for now so for the first step is uh, to check if there is a burn fuse so on this board we don't have a fuse so there is no fuse to check okay let's go to the second step second step is short to run on main power array uh, just to make our life a bit, little bit easier we are gonna make use of the board view so board view over here this is our AC adapter input circuit so the AC adapter voltage goes through these inductors goes through the first DC and MOSFET second DC and MOSFET and current sensing resistor over here so our main power rail which is always called AC bat sys on ASUS board is available just right there so we have already measured voltage so let's just confirm our initial voltage measurement so we are over here we have 0.9 volts ok so let's check the resistance now and plug the AC adapter switch to resistance mode on the multimeter so just to make sure we don't have any power left on the main power rail that could interfere with our measurements we are gonna quickly short it so using my probes and shorting the main power rail to ground to discharge it ok and if I measure the resistance now ok so it's still a little, little bit charged so let's do that again ok ok so now it's discharged and if our multimeter we are actually charging it little by little but we are at 26 kilo ohms which is perfectly fine there is no short to ground on this power wheel. so step number 2 is good let me switch back ok first third step is to check if there is a shorted DC and MOSFET so if we take a look again at the schematic we have the first DC and MOSFET and the second DC and MOSFET so what happens if the first DC and MOSFET is shorted if this MOSFET uh, gets shorted the power will go through this MOSFET and then will go through the second MOSFET through the body diode so we'll, you will see a slight voltage drop between the input and the main power rail typically around 0.6 volts because it will go through the body diode which isn't good but in this case we would get some voltage over here the other situation is if the second MOSFET gets shorted in this case the second MOSFET will create a short between grain source and gate so you will have a situation where source and gates are at the same potential which means there is no differential between these two and the MOSFET won't turn on it also means that the gate signal over here will also be pulled to the source voltage which will be 0 volt so what happens in this case when you have a engine in MOSFET over here uh, is that the gate will be pulled low and in this case if the gate is pulled low the first MOSFET won't turn on so you will, you will have power going here but not going after the MOSFET when you observe this kind of situation you might think yeah well this MOSFET is bad it doesn't let any power through but in, the, in fact it's just uh, turned off so this MOSFET is fine but the other one might be bad in our case we will uh, check both MOSFETs if there are any short you will never know so let's do that right now we are gonna measure between drain and source, source 4 megahms so this is perfectly fine and the other MOSFET is 9, 11 megahms ok so drain and source are good we are just gonna use the help of the board view 
to check the gate. So on this uh, MOSFET, the first one gate is over here, and on this second one gate is over here. Okay, so we're gonna check gate. Drain of source, I'm not sure in this case, but doesn't matter, it's not routed. Drain to the other pins, it's oak, uh, sorry, so gate to the other pin is oak as well. And on the other MOSFET, which is this pin, okay, so that's good, and that's good. Everything in the, is in the mega ohms range, so this is perfectly fine, there is no shorted MOSFET. Okay. So, step three, good. Step four, burnt current sensing lines. So, as I said earlier, there are protection inside the charger IC. So, charger IC is this part right here. And one of the protection is our overcurrent protection. So, it both has overcurrent on the AC at the turn put, thanks to the current sensing resistor over here. And it also has overcurrent detection on the battery input thanks to this uh, current sensing the resistor. So to check the current sensing circuit, the easiest way to do it is measure the resistance between the two current sensing pins. So here ACP and ACN are uh, two inputs to the current sensing amplifier of the chip. And if you measure the resistance between these two pins, we we'll measure the resistance of this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor at the same time and you also account for any situation where you could have a burn crack somewhere in this line and obviously the same is true for the other current sensing line over here okay so we are going to check the ac current sensing and the battery current sensing on this board the charger ac is all the way over here and on pin one and two we have ACN and ACP, so we are gonna measure resistance between these two pins. And the battery current sensing is between pin uh, 12 and 13. So we're gonna measure resistance between these two as well. Okay. So let's go to the charger IC. So our charger IC is here. This is this chip, okay? And if we measure between pin 1 and 2, so pin 1 and 2 are here. We have 239 kilo ohms, which is most likely what uh, what's wrong over here. Uh, we typically expect something in the ohms or maybe hundred of ohms range for the current sensing lines so just uh, since we are over here we are also going to check the battery current sensing so battery current sensing is over here this and this i think and we have 17 ohms so 17 ohms is probably right so we are going to check on the board view. So we just checked battery current sensing over here. We have this resistor, which is, which is a 6.8 ohms resistor. This resistor, which is a 10 ohm resistor. And then we have the current sensing resistor, which is over here, which is a 10 milli ohms. So in fact, when we add uh, 6.8 ohms to 10 ohms, we are around 17 ohms. So, battery current sensing is fine, okay. But we had a problem with the AC current sensing, okay. So, just to make sure we didn't make an error in our, our measurements or if uh, just the track between this cap and the chip is broken, we are gonna measure across this cap as well. So Let's measure across the cap, right here. And we get something similar, so 200 kilo ohms, which is still not fine. 
So on the board view, both lines, both columns and sync lines go to the other end of the board and they are connected directly to the current sensing resistor. So th these uh, parts are not actual parts on the board, they are just uh, some sort of uh, jumper on the PCB design, but they are not components soldered on the board. So in fact, our current sensing lines are connected directly to this current sensing resistor. So maybe the current sensing resistor is bad, so we are going to check this. Current sensing resistor is as I showed earlier over here. So this is our current sensing resistor. And if we check resistance between the two pins, we see that it's uh, lower than one ohm. So this is in fact a 10 milli ohm resistor as well. So this multimeter isn't accurate enough to measure 10 milli ohms, but uh, let's say that uh, 0.3 ohm is uh, good. Okay. And now we are going to check the resistance between this current sensing resistor and the charger IC, which is over here. So we want to make sure there is no broken track between these two parts. So if we check the current sensing resistor and this end of the cap, which is uh, either ICN or ICP, we get one ohm. So uh, there is continuity between the two. If we check on the other end of the cap, we have 200 kilo, kilo ohms. So there is no continuity between the other current sensing line and the current sensing resistor, which means there is a broken track somewhere. So the track goes from here all the way to here. So somewhere in here, there may be something wrong. If there is no component between the two, so it can only be a broken track. We are gonna uh, take the microscope and try to identify the current sensing line that's causing the problem. So, here we are. This is our current sensing resistor. So, from this current sensing resistor, there are a few things we can see. First, we have the one power plane going from the second DC MOSFET to the current sensing resistor. And then at the output here, we have another power plane, which is for the main power line. But just under the current sensing resistor, we can see two tracks going under here. So one track right there will connect to this end of the current sensing resistor. And the other track here will connect to the other end of the current sensing resistor. So um, we can already see something over here. It's kind of hard, but we have just a little bit of scratch solder mask on this track, okay? And if we go back and follow the track, okay? So we are following these two, this one and this one, okay? Let's go back. So they, they run straight next to the RAM area. And we can see something interesting right over there. So we have a scratch solder mask as well. So if we zoom a little bit and then go out of focus, of course. Uh, sorry, it's gonna be kinda dark because I can't adjust the exposure. Maybe uh, just to get a little bit more light, we're gonna zoom out. So the solder mask is scratched, but apparently the track itself isn't broken. Okay, so since the solder mask is scratched, we can measure the resistance between this point and the charging IC. So let me put my probe here and on the charging IC and we get less than one ohm. So between the charging IC and this part of the track, we have continuity. So this is fine. And now if we get 
if we measure the resistance between this part here and the current sensing resistor right over there we have our 200 k ohms so there is a break somewhere here uh, visually the truck looks fine here but just to make sure we are gonna scrape, scrape a little bit more solder mask maybe here okay so here it just scrapes some solder mask and not uh, the copper track itself so if I measure resistance between this point and the other point further up we get zero so this is not broken and from here to the current sensing resistor we have 200 kilohms so this is broken so let's go back to our current sensing resistor which is uh, over here so what we are gonna do is measure so since the solder mask is a little bit scraped right here we are gonna measure between here and here and we get 200 kilo ohms so clearly the track for this current sensing line let me zoom out a little bit okay, for the current sensing line covering over here is broken under the current sensing resistor so that's why we don't have any continuity and since we don't have any continuity the charger IC will measure 19 volt on one end of the resistor and won't be able to measure anything on the other end of the resistor so it will measure a large voltage drop across the resistor through these lines and think the machine is consuming way too much current so it enters uh, overcurrent protection and disables the DC in MOSFETs of course that's not what's happening there is no overcurrent situation just that the crack is broken over here so what we are going to do is simply run a jumper wire between the crack right next to the resistor and this end of the resistor so we are going to take our soldering iron I'm going to put some solder on the crack yes. ok, so solder, more solder mask is coming off, ok, very good and I'm gonna add some solder to the current sensing resistor as well ok some nice ch shiny solder joints and now we can add a jumper wire Okay, not pretty, but uh, we don't care as long as it makes a good contact. Okay, so now that's done, we can check the continuity again. So, if we check between the current sensing resistor on the track over here we have 0 ohm which is good and now if we check between the current sensing resistor the current sensing resistor over here and the charger I see over here so this one we get 1 ohm so the track is reconnected and uh, now we can check if we indeed get our main power rail back when on AC power we are gonna plug our AC adapter in so let's try it now let's switch to voltage so 
we can see that the fan turned on so of course we are now getting power if we measure voltage we indeed get 19.2 volts on our main power rail and the input is 19.2 as well so for now everything is working properly what we are going to do is plug everything back in and see what's happening so let's plug the screen okay speaker I didn't unplug the keyboard earlier but uh, it's fine on laptops that have a power button and the keyboard we don't want to unplug it as well to exclude the problem with the keyboard but here that wasn't the case okay and the front panel LEDs Okay, we are good, and finally, battery. Okay. So, now we plug it in like this, okay. And what we are going to do is check if our battery is charging. So, machine still turns on, but what about the battery? I'm going to check the voltage on the battery. You have 11.15 volts, okay. 11.16, 17, 17. So as you can see, the voltage is slowly going up, which means our battery is now charging. Okay, so battery looks fine. And what we are going to do is uh, turn off the machine, wait a little bit for the battery to charge and check if it can turn on from battery and hold a uh, charge. Okay, so we did let the battery charge for a while. It's still showing up the charging LED. But uh, let's turn it on and see where we are at. If the battery has charge at least to a decent level and yes it did so as you can see right now we are almost full and uh, when we began it was uh, empty so battery is charging let's try to unplug the AC adapter it stopped charging the laptop stays on Try to plug it back in. Starts charging again. Let's turn it off and try to turn on from battery only. So it's turning off. Okay, unplug the AC adapter. Now we turn it on from battery. And as you can see, it turns on. Perfect. So this is fixed. Uh, we still have a little bit of work to do because we are gonna uh, put some conformal coating on our uh, work on the jumper wire so that uh, no one tries to touch it. And we are also gonna put some conformal coating on the solder mask that spins scratched off because if we try to uh, guess to, uh, to what's happened here uh, probably someone removed the worm cover as you can see there is no worm co cover right there but on this board you have a metal shield around here so probably it was pried off uh, from this end where the scratch is 
and using something like a metal uh, tool or something like a screwdriver it throttled the current sensing trace to the metal bracket, bracket which is connected to ground so effectively shorting the 19 volt going from the uh, current sensing line to ground and uh, actually it burns the trace because this trace is relatively small since it's only a current sensing line and not a full uh, a line a full power rail carrying a lot of current let me unpack the battery uh, so yes, yeah, that's probably what happened and why it uh, failed like it did. So we are just going to put some conformal coating so that uh, when the shield is back on, it doesn't short to this line. And put some conformal coating here onto our uh, jumper wire so that uh, no one touches it. So, uh, let's use a microscope. We are gonna first work on this area. Where are we? Let's see. Here. So I'm gonna unplug the LCD connector. Of course, our battery is disconnected. We are gonna clean just a little bit because for the conformal coating to a stick. We need to remove some flux. So let's put on some green stuff. Okay, we are good. So let's use the ultraviolet light to cure it. And while this one is getting cured, we are gonna look at the other part we want to take care of which is this part over here so there are a few things we want to cover okay it should be good so let's cure this part now anyway so while this is uh, currently curing uh, just to sum it up so what the problem actually was is that this is a current sensing resistor we have a trace going from this current sensing resistor to the charger IC uh, sorry. so th this is the trace that goes to the charger IC, the current sensing trace SCA. It was broken right under the current sensing resistor. We run a jumper wire over the current sensing resistor on the trace. It fixed the problem because the original problem was that it wasn't turning on on AC adapter, it wasn't charging the battery. The um, charger IC wasn't turning on the DC in MOSFETs because it thought there was an overcurrent condition due to the current sensing line being broken and measuring a high voltage between the two ends of the current sensing resistor. And uh, we had the opportunity to show the guide I made uh, to troubleshoot laptop battery charging circuit. Uh, we went through the troubleshooting procedure and we checked uh, that there was no fuse, there was no short one power rail, there was no shorted DC MOSFET we had a bound current sensing line and that solved our problem. If it didn't solve the problem, we could go uh, further and check some voltages on the charger IC. And uh, if everything was fine here, we could check from damage passive components around the charger IC or finally maybe 
uh, suspect a dead charger IC. This is not the most common, this is why it's placed last, but it still happens sometimes. So that's it for this one.